and welcome to me, Cheryl, at Homestead in the Highlands. Um, a lot of people have done this 30 facts about yourself. Um, I thought I was really going to struggle with this, but I've come up with 30. I, I don't think most of them are interesting, but there are 30 facts about me. So, here goes. Number one. I am really short. I am four foot ten at best. Um, I was four foot eight and a half um, and I had some surgery on my back and I went up to four foot ten so now I'm somewhere around four foot nine, four foot ten. So I'm really short and hence why being overweight makes me look probably about 40 kilos heavier than I actually am because I'm so short. I have, number two, I have lived from by the south coast of England, now up to the north coast of Scotland. And I lived in the middle. I grew up in the Midlands. Uh, number three, I squirrel, as we call it, which means if, if you've ever watched one of my lives, I'll be talking about something and then somebody will make a comment. I'll read that comment and then just completely go off on that tangent. And then about three weeks later, I'll say, do you remember about three weeks ago, I was telling you this story, I told you this half, here's the other half. I'm very bad at that. I'm sorry. Hence why I've written these down. Hopefully stop me from squirrelling. Um, number four, I get bored easily. I really, really do. Um, don't know why. There's, I, I can start watching a film and within 20 minutes I'm bored, I just turn it off. Things like that. Um, same with if I'm doing something, you know, I'll have an idea in my head of, oh, I want to create this lovely bed, garden bed. And then after 20 minutes I just get bored and give up. That's just me. Number five, I love helping other people. And this has got me into trouble too much because I've helped people who have used my generosity and my kindness um, and it's happened over and over again. So I give people a second chance, third chance. I've learned now. Um, I'm sure I'll still do it again. Number six, this is a weird one. I know way too much about reproduction and castration. This is because I'm an artificial insemination technician for horses, but I also wanted to learn more. So actually I know a lot more than um, most artificial insemination technicians know. And I not only went into horses, I then went into looking at all other animals and other farm animals at the moment, because I have a go time studying up on that. And a lot of it is incredibly similar. And the weird thing is, it's incredibly similar to humans. I mean, it's scarily similar to humans. Um, and this leads me to <laughs> the castration side. Um, I know how to castrate most mammals and humans are mammals and the reproductive systems are so similar <laughs> that it scares a lot of men because if I ever felt the need I probably could castrate them, but I don't have access to the painkillers, so decide of that what you will. Number seven, I have way too many health problems. This is true. Um, my lungs don't work properly. Uh, I have fibromyalgia that affects so much, so many things. I have hearing problems. I have, uh, I've, I've had chemical burns in my eyes but amazingly they're back they're actually working thanks to some amazing technology um, and it all just sort of ties in together and just makes me generally unhealthy um, it makes it difficult to do anything really to do any exercise but I do actually love jogging I just can't do it at the moment yeah. oh but I want to and I need to I really do number eight I hate my hair Look at it. This, this is just, you know, 
<laughs> it doesn't actually look too bad at the moment. Um, my hair used to be down to my bum and it was greeny blue, turquoise. And I loved it and I shaved it all off for um, Macmillan Cancer Nurses. A few of us did it. Raised lots of money, so that was good. Number nine, OCD. I do have an obsessive compulsive disorder over muck heaps. Anyone who's been in my house knows I do not have a spotless house. Um, my house is lived in. That's it. I'm happy lived in. That's what I'm going to call it, okay? <laughs> it's not disgusting. It's just not spotless. However, if I go onto a yard and the muck heap, the horse, the horse yard and the muck heap is not spotless, it, it drives me nuts. And uh, if I'm going to be there for any amount of time, as some of my friends will, will uh, be able to testify to this, I will sometimes be found out on their muck heap on their yard, making it look perfect, nicely, you know, square, stepped, all nice, tidy. Ah, oh, I love that. Um, here, where we moved into, um, we moved in and there's a massive muck heap in one of the fields and it's a good maybe 60 metres long, probably about 5 metres wide, uh, probably about 2 metres tall. Um, I hate it. I, I don't like looking at it because I, I, I can't fix it. Um, there's there's too much. It's too much there. It's on soil. It's not on um, hardcore or anything. And I've just got to the point of I'm going to find somebody who can just put it all in a muck spreader and just spread it for me. But that's not my mess. I didn't make it. Mine, if you saw my last video, it's all nice and square. <laughs> but I'm just weird. Um, number 10. I don't care if I never ride any of my horses again. I love looking after them. I love looking out at them. At the moment, I'm not allowed to ride. Um, if I was found out in March, we had a, a bad carriage driving accident end of March um, last year. And uh, scans and CT scans and oh, uh, x-rays and MRIs and everything later they said I have a problem with my spine it might get better unlikely but it might I'm kind of hoping for that really um, but if it doesn't and I have another accident like I fall off a horse or a carriage driving accident like we had in March I'll probably end up paralyzed um, they won't do the surgery on me because there's a statistical chance good chance that I would be paralysed by the surgery but they've said if the injury paralyses me which it may do over time if the injury paralyses me then they'll do the surgery because then they've got a good chance of getting me unparalysed but they won't do the surgery because it could end up worse than not doing the surgery so I can't really ride and to be honest with I don't miss it I miss, you know, spending the time with my horses, but I go out there every day and spend time with my horses. Number 11, I love historical ways of living and farming. If you've never seen the BBC um, farm series, you've got Tudor Monastery Farm, Victorian Farm, Edwardian Farm, um, Wartime Farm, which is set during the Second World War. If you've never seen those, go, go and look for them. And they basically go about and show you how things were done. And these uh, historians and archaeologists actually spend a year living in that particular uh, era. They literally, everything they have is relating to that era. They don't have mobile phones. They don't have the internet. They don't have electricity. and so They do everything properly. And it's fantastic. And I love so much about all of that. I still love central heating, don't get me wrong. Okay, number 12, I can change a car tyre and I can top up my oil and check my oil and I can do the water and I can pump up tyres. I can do all sorts of things with my car that a lot of people can't and it drives me nuts when I see women go, I don't know how to do that. Why would I know my husband? 
who does that? No, do it yourself. Look it up on YouTube. Please, do it yourself. Because one day, you're going to get a flat tyre or something. You're going to need to change the tyre. You're going to be on the side of a road. They're going to tell you it's an hour, three hours, six hours, uh, 18 hours was the longest I once had to wait for um, my car to be collected. I ended up getting a lift home, coming back the next day. Do it yourself. That was something I couldn't fix. But, you know, change your car tyre. I've had to do it. My, I went through a phase, I don't know why, but for a week I had to change my car tyre three times. Um, I kept running over nails. Bad idea, don't do that. Uh, right, number 13. I have no children, but I have lots of them. Probably won't make sense. I used to have a lot of um, <laughs> dysfunctional children. No, they're my, they're my kiddies, I love them to pieces. Um, when I used to run a yard, we used to have lots of teenage teenagers around, girls and boys that were always there. And, you know, they'd, they'd stay over. I'd teach them stuff. I'd cook for them. They'd cook for me. It was just like having my own family. It was great. I still think of them as children. Even though some of them now have children of their own. That makes me a grandmother. I know I've got the grey hair, but... I don't know. Being a grandmother. Weird. Weird feeling. Thankfully, it's not biologically. Okay, number 14, I'm very, very Sheldon Cooper over my spot. If you don't know what that means, <laughs> you're not a Big Bang Theory fan. <laughs> I have my spot in the settee and I love that spot. And if other people sit in it, I, I, just, I, I just sort of walk around, can't really get very comfortable and just really want my spot back. <laughs> But because my legs don't reach the floor, I can't just sit anywhere. So I've got my corner and the corner setting and I'm right at the corner. And as Asha calls it, I have my little nest. So I've got my cushions around me, come around here. And I've got whatever drink I've got is on the side here. And um, I'll have a blanket, a heated blanket goes over me. That's my spot. I love it. Nobody sits in my spot. I'm not quite as bad as Sheldon. I let other people sit in my spot. I just get really uncomfortable if they're in my spot. Oh, they're more ways than one. Number 15. Hmm. I wonder about this one. Everything happens for a reason. I do believe that. Never under or don't understand it, but I do believe it. Everything brings you to where you're supposed to be. 16. I actually studied business law. And I loved it. That's my background, is law. And now I'm a farmer. <laughs> I, I went a weird way about it. <laughs> 17, I, I actually studied. Um, I studied um, at an agricultural college. I went to college, at what was a working farm, it was agricultural college, and I did a lot of fun there. I mean, Agricultural college where you can live there. If you can, or your children ever get the opportunity, send them. Seriously, it is the best life. It is so much better than normal college, university, whatever you want to call it. it oh, we had so much fun. So, so much fun. I'd say about 99% of which I can't tell you on YouTube. <laughs> my family don't know for a start. Most of my friends don't know. How it got to stay. <laughs> okay, number 18. I'm addicted to chocolate. I don't just mean I like chocolate. I, it is actually a physical addiction. Um, it's quite bad. It, I've, I've asked for help, but you just get looked at. What? It, it is, it's physical addiction. If, if I, well, when I do, because I do try and come off chocolate on a regular basis, um, I end up literally getting really irate with people I get I start shaking and all sorts so that's bad that's not a good fact about me number 19 <laughs> it's probably quite funny um considering this channel is all about homesteading which is growing your own food um I'm a useless gardener I really am not 
good at gardening. I enjoy it, but I can't do it. I'm, I'm useless and I try and I try and I'll get the occasional thing that works. I'm still trying, still trying this year. I'm not going to give in, I will master it. But so far I'm just useless. But it's fun trying. Number 20, I lose interest in ideas quickly. I do. Oh God, it's terrible. If I want to do something and it involves, I've got to buy something. Somebody else has got to do part something for me so I can then go and do the other bit that I want. If it's not done quickly, I lose interest. And then I just don't want to know. Just can't be asked anymore. Um, I hate that because so often I want to do something, but it has to rely on my partner doing something else first before I can do it. And he's so busy with work and everything else that what I need doing doesn't get done. And then by the time it is done, a month or two later or a year later or whenever, I've lost interest. I don't want to do it anymore. It's boring. What's the point? I've got no enthusiasm left for it. it drives me nuts. It really does. Number 21. I was actually deaf until I was about seven or eight years old. I can't remember. I had the surgery when I was either seven or eight. I know I had to be seven, but I can't remember if I was seven or eight when I had it. But I couldn't hear till then. And I do have trouble every now and then with my hearing. Number 22. This is a good one, especially considering what I studied. Um, I used to play with a giant train set every day. And what I mean by that? was I was a signaller on the railway. I was the person in the signal box setting the routes for the trains so they weren't where they were supposed to go and uh, setting the lights and everything and it was the best job in the world. If you can get to work on the railway, it's a fantastic life. Signaller, best job ever. It's not fun when you're dealing with people jumping in front of trains and killing themselves and you're on duty. But that's why you get paid so well, because when you get paid for when things go wrong, not for when everything goes right. Um, brilliant job. I'd love to do it again. My health just won't let me anymore. Ah, 23. I love building things like with wood and you know stuff, nails and hammers. Um, just not very good at it. But I enjoy trying. My partner just gets a bit upset with me when I say, where's this tool or that tool? And he says, what are you doing with it? And I say, I'm going to build a shelter for, for the sheep. And then he says, no, you're not. And I say, yes, I am. And then I go out and he comes out and says, no, I will do it for you. Because <laughs> I am useless. I'm not useless. Everything is just not as well made as it could be. But I enjoy trying. I love that. Uh, 24. As a lot of you will know, having seen me on commenting on people's lives, I have a really erratic sleep pattern. Um, that's due to my uh, fibromyalgia. Um, I can be awake for 40 something hours and only sleep for an hour, and then I can be asleep for 40 something hours and only be awake for an hour. That's the way it is. 25, I'm an empath. It means that I pick up on other people's emotions um, and it does it does get draining. Um, I pick up on other things as well. If somebody's pregnant, I don't know why. I can tell normally before they know. That is creepy. Also, guess it, I quite often guess the names that they're going to name their kids before they name them. Before they've even had the kid, that's even more scary. Oh, right. This comes up on a lot, a lot of homesteading groups. So... I'll just put it out there. I'm not religious. I am in a way, but I'm not. I'm very spiritual. But I don't follow a set religion. It's not my thing. Um, it's just me. Tell you all, <laughs> I completely respect. And I'm amazed that people have been able to take that leap of faith. Because to me, I can't unless I see something. That's just me. That's just you. Each to their own, eh? My religion is doing to others as you want to do to, as you want done to yourself and work with nature.
best way to get along in life. 27, weave. I like weaving. I weave material. I like weaving rugs. Um, I've woven quite a few things that are actually hanging around the house, but you can't see from here. Uh, can I spin? Yes. As in fibre. I can spin fibre. I do have a spinning wheel. I just get bored. So I don't do it very often. 29. Ugh. I cannot cook on electric hobs. I can't. I struggle with electric ovens. I am, I'm actually a really good cook. But I cannot, for the life of me, cook on electric. Just and unfortunately, this house is electric. Once the um, Rayburn is working, the Arga type thing, I'm hoping I'll be able to learn how to use that problem. Right, number 30, because this has gone over 20 minutes now. Number 30, I, for many years now, have suffered with uh, depression. I'm open about it, I talk about it. If you ever want to talk about it, message me. I will talk about it all day long. Um... I've come back from a very dark place in depression and right now I'm actually starting to come off my medication. So, well, I already am part of my medication. But, yeah, if you suffer with it, trust me, you're not alone. I'm not alone. You're not alone. None of us are alone. That's it. 30 facts about me. Oh, that was tiring. That's it. Anything else you want to know? Ask me any questions in the comments if you want to know anything else. Or if you want me to go into further detail, any of this stuff. It's nearly bedtime. Bye!